Hello and welcome to episode 105 of Fergo and the Freak. I'm that bloke from Rugby League Project, Andrew Ferguson. You can find me on Twitter at AndrewRP. And joining me as always is the glorious League Freak, who you can find on Twitter at League Freak. How you going there, mate? Pretty good. Um, it's times like this where I'm really gra- glad that we have a podcast because we can talk about something that I know has really got to both of us the last couple of days now. Yes, um regular listeners would know that we we haven't been shy about having a go at the media when they act like absolute morons. And this last few days, it's just been a, a moron-a-thon. And basically from one or two people. It's been crazy. Yeah, and it's been... It's all been directed at... It's, it's really hard to explain. It's like the only story right now is player movement. And, you know, this test match is coming up. They could focus on that, but they're not doing that. Um, and the play movement has kicked in because November 1st ticked over. And November 1st allows players to negotiate beyond this 2020 season, the contract beyond this 2020 season. So uh, there's a lot of players that are going to be off contract this co- after this coming season. Now they can negotiate that. So it's almost like the silly season opens it to a little extent. And, you know, most of it's fair enough, but I think that uh, it's it's taken a kind of a sinister turn, to be honest with you. Especially when it's targeting one player an awful lot with, let's be honest, it's just rumours. There's been no facts. Um, So let's get into it. Uh, Mm. On May 2 this year, James Hooper reported on Fox Sports... That, and I quote, the Roosters power brokers are convinced that South Sydney are going to make a play for Luttrell. It's been all the talk for the last couple of weeks. Now, I'll read out all of the quotes Hooper has to back up this news. Okay, I'm done. No quotes. (laughs) Uh, You know, South, obviously, that was around the time that Greg Inglis announced his retirement and South had a lot of money under the cap. Mm -hmm. And they chose to go with James Roberts, who... You know, it's not like they use their salary cap on a different uh, position in the team. They got a centre, and yeah, so that was wrong. They they tried to water it down by saying that um, it was paranoia by the Roosters, but there was no quotes to back any of that up. So, you know, um, the following month on June 18, James Hooper then reveals that Latrell Mitchell could be going to the Bulldogs on a 10-year deal worth $11 million. Hooper said he was confident these conversations have taken place. That's not a fact. That's just him yeah. saying, I, I'm fairly certain these conversations have taken place. He's got no evidence to back that up. So, but would, you, the, would you even say something like that about a situation that, like say, uh, I don't know, say about our podcast, right? Uh-huh. If somebody said to me, He's going to do the podcast next year. I wouldn't say I'm confident we're going to if I knew we were going to. Well, that's right. You know, I would say, yeah, it happened. Yeah. Um, now, I'll, I'll also read out all of the uh, direct quotes that he got for this story. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, I'm done. Wow. Well, He's going well. He is. Two for two. He is. Uh, same day, a few hours later. The Canterbury Bulldogs boss denies offering Latrell Mitchell a 10-year multi-million dollar deal. The Bulldogs CEO Andrew Hill denied that any club official had approached Latrell or his family. That story did not come from James Hooper. Okay, but uh, obviously, obviously the club's lying because James Hooper isn't, right? Well, well, he was confident. Yeah, I mean, he's, I mean, he's confident. We know he's confident. He's a boorish loudmouth. He's always confident. He was um, frowning when he said he was confident, so you know it's true. Yeah, he put on his serious voice. He took his voice down just that little bit lower. He likes that one. Um, he does, doesn't he? He, lo- he likes putting on the deep voice. <laughs> um, I don't know what that's about. He does it all the time. I it's think he thinks weird. it makes him sound more serious and legitimate. Yeah, it doesn't. No, no you just... You just sound like a bigger idiot. Um, October 31. Look away, Roosters fans. Latrell has been visiting Bulldogs officials at home. 
Fox Sports senior reporter James Hooper revealed his opinion piece about Mitchell visiting the homes of Bulldogs officials. Now, I'll read out all of the direct quotes Hooper has to back up this news. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm done. Fantastic. Um, (laughs) So, you know. This is essentially a piece he wrote to to double down on the fact that the story he wrote before about the Bulldogs approaching Latrell Mitchell Mm. didn't turn up, didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Now, I will stress... I'm not saying that Latrell did or didn't meet with the Bulldogs. What we're seeing here is if you've got a story and you're confident that it's accurate, correct, you would have more than just your own bullshit opinion to back it up with it. Because mm-hmm. when it falls through, you get made to look like you're just making up stories. Mm-hmm. That's why you get a few quotes to substantiate the claims that have been made. I've spoken to this person and this person. It makes you look like you've followed the trail and you've done a bit of work. But just going out and punching down an opinion piece, I can do that in Melbourne and just talk bullshit and it's just as legitimate as what he's doing. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, how many times can you do that about a story when we're supposed to stop just paying attention to anything you say? Like for me, it's two for two when you're out. You know, I'll give someone a chance because – Things can change. Situations can change. Uh, But, you know, how many times do you want to write and back yourself up on the same story, provide no, you know, no corroborating evidence for it, no quotes? You're not saying you've spoken to anyone. You're just tossing it up. Yeah, he's just tossing up ideas. I mean, we do that on here, but Mm. we don't don't frame it as fact. No. We make it pretty clear. It's just our opinion. Yeah, like we'll say, like, you know what I'd like to see? And I'm basing this on absolutely nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, it, it, that's fine. It, if James Hooper wants him to play for the Bulldogs, it'd be it'd be fine if James Hooper comes out and says, you know what, I'd really like to see him at the Bulldogs. That's fine. It is. But he's he's trying to make it those news. He's trying to look credible. Mm. And there's a, there's a thing with credibility. Mm. You either are or you aren't. You can't mm-hmm. you can't give the appearance of it. <laughs> anyway, uh, November one, Anthony Mundine is in the middle of Latrell Mitchell contract talks with the Bulldogs. So according to Hooper, Anthony Mundine has a friend who works at the Bulldogs. Now I'll read out all of the direct quotes Hooper has to back up this news. Okay. Okay, I'm done. All right. It's a bit of theme here, isn't there? There is a theme. Um, mm-hmm. This one is based purely around the fact that Anthony Mundine, who has, has a friend who works at the Bulldogs, and I dare say he's alluding to the fact that he's using that and his relationship with Latrell to get Latrell a conversation at the Dogs. Yeah, uh, because... I, let's be honest. If, if you're Latrell Mitchell, mm. and I say this with absolutely no disrespect to Anthony Mundine whatsoever... If you're Latrell Mitchell and you're you're looking for a new club, I think as a current Test and Origin player and a two-time Premiership winner at the age of 22, a lot of clubs are going to say, yeah, we'll sit down and have a chat with you. I don't think you'd need Anthony Mundine or anybody to help set up a meeting in that area. No. And, and I dare say that Latrell Mitchell says to the 15 other clubs, I'm interested in come to your club i don't care what their cap situation is i don't care who they've got in their roster i would suggest that they that every single last one of them have a meeting about it yeah you know they don't just go oh no thanks we're good like they would all have a meeting that's that's their job that's what they're supposed to do that's exactly right we wouldn't be doing their job properly if they weren't doing that Mm -hmm. (laughs) now we get into the silly part of things it's all okay. been pretty sensible till now, mm-hmm. which is not setting a very good tone. <laughs> um, November 6th, so this is yesterday. Latrell Mitchell, a tiger? Surprise suitor emerges to possibly end Sydney Roosters standoff. So, essentially, James Hooper has learnt that the GM of football at the Tigers, Adam Hardigan, used to work at the Roosters. Coupled with the Tigers, quotation marks, war chest, uh, this means Mitchell could be going to the Tigers. Now, I'll read out all of the direct quotes Hooper has to back up this news. Okay. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> now, wasn't this the exact same day that 
the Panthers ruled themselves out of signing Latrell Mitchell. Yes. Based on, like, I think there was a little murmur in the media somewhere, and I wouldn't be shocked if it was that same article. Um, and the Panthers were like, no, we, we, we just can't do it. Like, yeah. I think that they what they basically said to paraphrase them was, we would love to look at having a player of his caliber on board, but at this stage, we're kind of not in the race for him. So we're, we're not in it. With any luck, Penrith's probably looking at getting Russell Packer. How dare you? <laughs> Does he have somebody, maybe Anthony Mundine. Oh, there's an idea. Yeah. Chalk, Rusty, get in, Rusty chalk, Packer get in could t- use a hand. Just say, Chuck, get in touch with Panthers. Mm. Work as an intermediary between the, the club and, and Packer. Mate, that'd be fantastic. I'm not <laughs> sure about this, but I'm, I, I'm almost certain that there's an employee at the Panthers that used to work at the West Tigers too. Oh. Well, mm. mate, that, that deal's on the table then. I reckon. In fact... That's how, that's how this stuff works. Yeah, yeah. Actually, you know what? I, I can I can take this one step further. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to rule out Latrell Mitchell to Penrith yet, because I don't know if you know this. Ivan Cleary, mm-hmm. the coach of Penrith, used to play for the Roosters. No way. And also in the same position that Latrell Mitchell no. plays. No way, mate. Lock it in. Wow. Lock it in. Um, I'm, I'm going to go and get a Latrell Mitchell Panthers jersey tomorrow yeah, based on that. I would. Get his name all over it. Get his number on there. Mm. Get all of that. Now, on the same day that James Hooper said that Latrell Mitchell could become a Tiger, um, he also posted an article that says Latrell Mitchell wants to play fullback at the Bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> If, it feels oh. like maybe he's a little bit confused, eh? <laughs> oh, he's, he's trying to keep up with his own. He's so excited. You know what he's he's like, okay? Mm. He, he's like he's like someone who's just about to take their first ever ride on a motorbike. Yeah. And instead of getting on like a, a low-powered motorbike, they've decided to get on a 500cc. And someone <laughs> said, you just turn your hand a little bit that way and it'll go. And he's mm. gone, okay. And he's just spun it really hard and fast and the bike's just shot off and he's just hanging on for deal life with it. That that's kind of James Hooper with his with his rumor mongering at the moment at this stage. Like he's like those videos on YouTube where someone's on a bike and they end up crashing into the side of a car about yeah. ten feet away. That's right. Mm. We're waiting for that. Um <laughs> so Oh by the right. way, this yeah. this is the same day that the Bulldogs re signed Dallin Watini Zelezniak uh-huh. for another few years to yeah. play fullback. <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Latrell Mitchell wants to play fullback of the dogs, but they already have one. This may surprise some, but the heading is actually misleading because in this alleged meeting with the Bulldogs, Hooper claims that Latrell told the dogs that he wants to be a fullback. That's it. He didn't say which club he wanted to be a, a fullback at. Yeah. Now, I'll read out all of the direct quotes Hooper has to back up this news. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> oh jeez it's um you know Latrell Mitchell uh, there's some players in this league that they should try and play fullback and Latrell Mitchell is one of them he um, as a junior yeah uh, like it's uh, of course he wants to have a go at fullback like I want to see how he goes at fullback he might be able to be the Australian fullback for the next 10 years um, so yeah, it's not like it's some sort of outlandish demand or anything, you know? I saw one article saying that the problem with him wanting to be a fullback is he needs to work on his fitness. I went, what sort of bullshit is that? How can yeah. you tell me Latrell Mitchell's not fit? It's not like he's getting around carrying around a 105 kilo frame and playing in the centers. He's what, 90 kilos? Yeah. He, I mean, he's very tall, but he's not carrying yeah. extra bulk or anything. No. And yeah, and it's like, well, he's playing centre <laughs> now. If you give him the role as playing fullback, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The kid's a freaking freak. Mm. Um, today, oh boy. Now it stepped. It stepped over a line today. Oh, today. Latrell Mitchell and the mystery two hundred fifty thousand dollar Mercedes. 
the first sign the wheels have fallen off of the roosters. There's a bit to unpack here, so I'll go through it here. Yeah. Hooper claims that roosters insiders, none of whom are named, first started having concerns about Latrell's headspace when he arrived at training one day and the Mercedes S63 Turbo AMG sports car evaded around $250,000. Now, first of all, Hooper has got the wrong model of Mercedes. Quite conveniently, the PZ found one of the most expensive models. However, it was found that Latrell was actually getting around in a CL A45 AMG worth around about 80 grand brand new. Way less than 250,000. That's uh, that's absolutely hilarious, I. Oh my god! And so, this this is essentially how I think Hooper's got minus works. He's seen, he's heard about this story. I think it was actually posted on Latrell's Instagram account, mm-hmm. and he's gone. Oh, that's a Mercedes. I'll know. I'll, I'll go and find the most expensive one I can, and just say that's the one he was driving around in, because that would be a good angle. But this idea that, but this idea that he rocks up to Roosters training where they're all driving Holdens and Fords, you know, Holden, bloody Ford Falcons and Holden Commodores. And he turns up in a Mercedes and he gets out and he's got this Butte car and no one asks him, how much was it? Literal. They just all assume like that. That is not how fucking life works. That's not real life. If I turn up at your place with a brand new car that's nice and shiny, the first thing you do is you go, wow, that's a nice car. The second thing you say, how much did that cost? And the <laughs> third thing that happens is, I fucking tell you. Yeah. And then, right, let's test this shit out. Yeah. <laughs> it's, um... it's, just this, it's this scene that doesn't exist in the real world. The crazy you know, thing about it is that the article started turning into an advertisement for this Mercedes car that he looked up. Oh, He's talking about what really? the top speed of it was and how much it could be <laughs> worth and stuff. Isn't it? What the fuck is this? <laughs> Jesus. Now he's, now he's trying to do what he can to try and give himself a Merc. That's hilarious. Maybe they've got good I can't stand suspension. that sort of like product placement stuff here. Let me just have a nice sip of Coke. Yeah, mm. I must admit I've had, a, I've oh, had one of those as well. Mm. You can't beat the real thing, Andrew. Oh, that's true. Um, I'm having that while consuming some Vicks Vapo drops because, yes, the streak has ended. I do have the flu again. <laughs> well, you had a good three or four days. Yeah, oh, it's going great. I was sitting there going, oh, I can use my nose again. This sounds fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that ended quick. <laughs> now, Hooper also revealed that Mitchell told players the car wasn't even his. It actually belonged to a friend. So what's what's the fucking story then? What's the story? Yeah. Well, after a look, it said James had some questions that he lacked the balls to actually ask Latrell Mitchell, such as, was Latrell beginning to listen to too many people around him? Was his va- Were his values changing? Was he getting swept up in the fast lane of big city life? Um, simple job for you, uh, James, is... Go out to the club and ask him. I've got another question to add to that list, by the way. Yeah. Is Latrell Mitchell really Batman? Oh. I mean, why not? Why Uh, not just chuck any questions in there? I think the problem with that is Batman's kind of a brooding, dull sort of human, if we're honest. And Latrell looks to be pretty happy. Well, you know the secret about Batman is he's a psychopath. Like, he is as, as a psychopathic as all the criminals. Maybe James Hooper could be Batman. <laughs> Batman with uh, Christian Bale's Batman voice. That's how he right. tries to talk anyway. Hello, I'm Batman. It's not going to work. I'm you, need sort of, you need that sort of gravelly but sort of somewhat quiet voice, and Hooper just does boorish loud yelling all the time. Yeah, that's true. I'm sorry I use the word boorish a lot when I describe James Hooper, but trust, tell me. Somebody tell me, what's a better word to describe him? But he cared. When, I, when I think of the word boorish, yeah, he's the only thing I think of, nothing else. Mm. I just listen to him and go, oh. his, his voice is like a sledgehammer to the temple. 
Yeah, it's like, I. you know what I want to do whenever I hear him talk is just sort of sit down with him and say, just be yourself, dude. Like, it's all right. And I feel like he'd start crying. He, he would. He would. Remember that argument like, he had with... I try to turn argument. it on like this. I feel like it makes me more credible. And you're like, it's all right. Just let it out, man. Just let it out. Remember that argument he had on, on uh, Fox Sports with Brett Finch, and Brett Finch just absolutely caned him. Mm. And he just went all quiet. He went... Yeah. He's having a crisis. <laughs> <laughs> Hoops is having a crisis. He's going to break down a bit or he's going to explode. By the way, <laughs> if, if anyway. somebody says to you, can I just ask you a question? Someone says to you, do you want to lend my $90,000 Mercedes Benz to drive to work in? What do you say to them? Uh, no, nah, I want the one that's worth 370000 Have you got one of them? <laughs> that one doesn't exist, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing is, later on in that article, he said that the $250,000 car can actually be sold for up to 370000 I don't know what angle he was, or what sort of narrative he was trying to make by talking about how expensive the car was. When you consider yeah. that the player in question is earning $800,000 a year, even a $370,000 car is within his price range. And well within, and keep in mind, if he's on 800000 Let's cut it down to four hundred thousand after taxes, right? And take another forty off for his, his <laughs> uh, manager, right? So, so ten percent, you know. Mm. Um, so let's say he's got three hundred sixty thousand dollars, and he's got that this year, and he got that the year before, and he'll get that next year as well before he gets five hundred thousand cash in hand when he signs his million dollar deal with whoever. You know, if he has a three hundred and fifty thousand dollar car, that's not unreasonable. I'm pretty sure like that's that's Benji, totally fine. Pretty sure Benji Marshall has a very very nice car. Somebody yeah. said it was a Lotus, I think. Um, yeah. yeah. Here's a here's a scoop. Most players have really nice cars. Mm, they can Cameron, afford them. Except Cameron Smith. What does he have? Well, let me put it this way. You can take the boy out of Ipswich, but you can't take the Ipswich out of the boy. Oh, there you go. What's he got? He likes his he likes his old Falcons. Okay. You know, uh, Luke Phillips <laughs> tweeted me earlier, and he was saying in, in the year 2000, he rocked up to the Roosters with a $125,000 car, and he said, oh, I'm not anywhere near as good as Latrell Mitchell. And that's pretty. it's pretty funny, because back then, Man, that was a lot of a lot of money. I asked him what sort of car it was, and he hasn't got back to me yet. But uh, you'd still write down anyway. Well, I said to him he was a troublemaker because <laughs> Luke Phillips was like the least trouble of any player ever. <laughs> he is indeed. Now, um, I'll just read out all of the direct quotes Hooper had to back up this story about the two hundred fifty thousand dollar car. Okay, my body is ready. Okay, I'm done. Okay, that makes sense. So, I mean, and that's where we're at today, right? Seven articles since June, Mm. or since May, actually. Seven articles since May of James Hooper following around Latrell Mitchell. Well, actually, no, I I take that back. He hasn't followed him around because he hasn't gone anywhere near him. Mm. He sat in his office in, you know, Fox Studios, and just wrote articles. And he's just persisted with it and kept pushing this barrow until something finally happens. It's almost like he will, he's decided he's going to keep writing as many rumour articles about Latrell Mitchell leaving the Roosters until eventually Latrell Mitchell leaves the Roosters to the point where it looks like he's trying to force him out of the club. And then he can say, see, I told you. That's exactly like you right. you linked him to half the competition, you idiot. And talked about it incessantly. He's like an obsessive schoolgirl. It's like that movie, Single White Female. Mm. Yeah. I, I've got a real so. problem with. I've got a pro- problem with the way the media has treated Latrell Mitchell this year because he's a, a he's twenty two, and he has not at any stage done anything really wrong. 
Um, and they the line keeps on putting it being put out. He's got a bad attitude, and it's affecting his football. And this is a guy that made the Australian Test team, like last weekend. That's right. Um, and this this other thing that you see that they're doing too, and they do it a few times, but they're doing it with Latrell now, mm-hmm. is they will get Anthony Mundine, who is a divisive figure in the sporting community. And they'll attach him to any story of any person who they want to put, you know, knock down a few pegs. And they've linked him to they've linked Mundine to Latrell Mitchell twice in the last few few the last week and a half. And and it's it's because they're both Aboriginal. Because well, it, any <laughs> other player wouldn't be it wouldn't you know, if say it was uh Nathan Cleary. They wouldn't be going to Anthony Mardine and saying, hey, Anthony, what do you reckon about Nathan Cleary's contract? Well, see, this is the thing, though. I think Mundine is, is pretty consistent. He'd probably just say the same thing. But the problem here is the comments that Mundine made, I think they were today, was yeah. Latrell Mitchell needs to think about Latrell Mitchell. He's got a, he's got a young family. He's got one child, another one on the way. He's only 22. He's got his entire future ahead of him. He needs to go out and make as much money as he can. Mm. Tell me what part of that whole, you know, mindset is wrong. None of it, yeah. And it, he's 100% correct. And everything Latrell Mitchell has done to this point, he, he is 100% within his rights as an NRL player under his contract. Like, he hasn't done anything wrong. He's just preparing himself for being on the open market as every player that comes off contract needs to do. Even if you've got a play, if you're a player manager and your player comes to you and says, Hey, I want to stay at the current club that I'm at. He has to say, that's cool, man. But my job is to make sure that if your current club says, see you later, I'm not sitting here twiddling my thumb saying, well, there's no backup plan. He, your player manager has to go out and, and look at all of your options, and whether you're even thinking about them options or not, because that's his job, and that's what you employ him to do. That's exactly right. Um, so they almost tried to get the most selfish sounding quote they could from Anthony Mundine as a way to make Latrell look selfish, because that's been the under, you know, the under the whole undercurrent of all of this is Latrell's mm. greedy and he wants more money. Mm. Point to me a player who doesn't want more money. Exactly. And point to me a player who... Latrell Mitchell, I think it's fair to say, top 20 player in the world, right? Easy. I think it's fair to say, arguably a top 10 player in the world, right? Especially on his day. Where's this idea that him looking to maximise his earning potential is a bad thing? Yeah, I don't that, understand it. That's that's the bit I don't get. Mm. Is and again this whole whole talk of where's the loyalty? It's not coming up too often at the moment, but I do see it around in some of the responses. Mm-hmm. And people, we did an episode about this ages ago. Loyalty doesn't exist in rugby league, and if it does, it's only in a very minority, and it's players generally extending it to the club. Very rarely is it the other way around. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people think about, oh, but players in the past used to stay with their club for a long time. Yeah, that's how the contract system works. Look at Dennis Tutty. He could not leave his club, Balmain, for years, even though he refused to play. He said, I don't even want to play anymore. And they went, that's fine. We'll still keep your contract so you can't leave and go anywhere else. He had to take him to the high court to get out of it. The other thing is, too, people forget that you would have, like, veteran players that would be sometimes playing third grade. You yeah. know, they'd be playing in numbers that barely, you know, fit on the back of the jersey. And that's how they ended their careers. Yep. And that was just to make sure that they didn't have to play against them. Mm-hmm. The players were just cattle. They were just commodities. And you didn't want to strengthen another team by letting a player go. So you just, you ruin their careers. Mm. That's That's not loyalty, people. Um, <clears throat> so, and obviously that wasn't all players, but that was the system that was in place. So clubs could exploit it any time they wanted to, and they often did. Uh, so yeah, it's, loyalty's not there. Never has been. 
Um, so that's that's the James Hooper obsession stories sort of done for the year. Uh, he's he's got to the point now where he's hanging on for grim life to this machine he's created mm. of Latrell Mitchell rumor stories that now he's making up shit about whatever car he's driving. And people um, are pissed off about this. Like, I I did a tweet about this, uh, quoting the Fox Sports article that he'd done. And last time I checked, it had, like, and I said it was disgusting because Latrell Mitchell has done nothing wrong. And last time I checked, it had, like, 200 and something likes. Um, yeah. it, people are fucking angry about it. And they've, I think they've got every right to be angry about it because this young bloke is getting hammered in the media. His reputation is being besmirched in a, a almost a subtle way. And I think this car story is, is one of those ways. And it's trying to twist him to be a figure that is, uh, you know, they, they're trying to change it so that no one will have sympathy for Latrell Mitchell and that they're going to look at him in a terrible light. When in reality, Luttrell has done nothing wrong. He's done nothing at all wrong. And no. he's had all of this pressure this year, people willing to jump on him and, and call him this, that, or the other. He had a great year. He had a fantastic year on the field. Um, he played test footy for Australia. He played for New South Wales. He's... Try scoring record, fantastic. His point scoring record, fantastic. Won a premiership. And where, you know, you go into the media and they're calling him lazy and overrated and things like that. I, I find it disgusting. And it's been a real campaign against him. And I find it uh, very off-putting. There's, there's something about this that I think that other players need to stand up and defend Latrell Mitchell. Because when the media starts on this sort of campaign against a player, and if it, they find that it works and they get the clicks they want, because they don't care about anything apart from clicks and reads, if they get what they want out of this, they'll start doing this to more and more players. And if they start doing this to more and more players, I mean, it's going to force some players out of Australia. Because... You know, what, what is happening to poor Latrell Mitchell right now, and look, Latrell's going to be fine. He's going to end up with, with a million-dollar contract wherever he ends up, probably at the Roosters, funnily enough. But uh, wh whatever happens, he'll get a big contract. But I just find this whole campaign this year has been, there's been some some sort of weird grossness behind it. It's fucking, it's, it's it's fucking sick is what it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's I mean, a sickness. Stuff, but even the stuff with the racism, right? I w and I'm a big footy person. I don't have Instagram. I would not have known about the racism stuff on Instagram if it wasn't continually put out there by the media over and over again. And at the end of the day, Latrell has given it back to somebody that said something <laughs> shitty to him on his Instagram account, and I don't know what they said, but whatever they said, it was shitty. Um, but the media has then given that person a platform and they haven't named them or anything, but the, I mean, even today, it's been brought up about the racial vilification and stuff. Yeah, and it, at some point, it's like I don't know. It just seems like there's this snowball effect that's going on with Latrell Mitchell. And if he if he was a prick, if he was a, if he was playing like shit, if he was doing all this rotten stuff off the field, I'd say you know what. At some point, you bring it on yourself. I'm not seeing what Latrell Mitchell's doing to bring it on himself. No, that's right. And, yeah, I mean, you don't have to name the person making these racist comments. But by, as you said, by making them public and revealing them to the world, you're justifying them to some degree. You're giving them a platform. You're saying, hey, look what this person did. And all of a sudden, you're going to get a bunch of other fucking idiots who'll come along and go, oh, I'll do that too, see if I get famous. Exactly. You start giving the oxygen. That's what yeah. it is. And that's the last thing that we should be doing with this stuff. And I'm not saying, you know, it's it's stupid. I hope the person was banned from Instagram or whatever. Because it's just ridiculous. Like, I don't understand people that do that shit. But 
Yeah, it, to, when it is still being brought up by the media months later, they, they're part of the cycle of it. That's right. And speaking of that, today, just when we thought James Hooper had been the biggest moron we could, Bulldog Richie said, hold my beer. <laughs> in one, in about a minute, he trumped all that with just sheer ignorance and fuckheadery. Um, Dean Ritchie asked Laurie Daly, an indigenous man himself, an absolute legend of the game, in regards to Latrell Mitchell, and I quote, do you honestly believe that the racial vilification early in the year did affect him? If it did, should it? At which point Laurie Daly scoffs loudly and immediately before sitting back in his chair with his arms folded sternly as he stared a hole through Ritchie's head, which only served to reveal a chasm of space between his ears. Richie went on. Very condescendingly, I must say. Now, hang on, hang on, let me finish. Who the hell talks to a, an, a rugby league legend like that? You, you just shut up. I haven't finished speaking yet. You're a nobody, Richie. Anyway. And do you think this has happened so often in Latrell's life that he now has become used to it? Albeit, I don't agree with it. Clearly but it is something that he has to learn to live with. Something like this can't be allowed to affect his form, albeit it would be difficult to overcome. Oh, my God. He's just got to live with the racial abuse. That's all. It's, now, it's so easy. This is the same person who cannot cannot accept anyone questioning. I'm not calling abusing. Questioning one of his articles. You question one of his articles on Twitter, he will block you. Are you blocked, so... Andrew, by Bulldog Ritchie? Yes. I'm blocked by him too. I asked him in one article, are you sure about that? Blocked. Um, I can't remember what it was about. But there was no swearing, no abuse, none of that. I just asked him, are you sure about that? Because I'd heard different to what he had. Mm -hmm. um, turned out I was right. Not that I'm surprised, but anyway. Um <laughs> The fact that some spineless turd who can't handle a tiny bit of criticism has the has the gall to tell an Aboriginal twenty two year old footballer to just learn to live with being you know with racist comments is the most disgraceful, condescending, uh, outrageous. Dis disgraceful, despicable, pathetic piece of shit I've heard in the media landscape in rugby league for a long time. Mm. I will say, though, there is a, an upside here, and yep. that is um, Laurie Daly deserves a Nobel Peace Prize for not jumping across that desk and bashing 16 shades of shit out of Dean Ritchie for what he said. He really does. And Laurie Daly, I mean... You could see him calm himself down and mm. give a very rational and well thought out uh, response to the try where to he was. Well, the he situation. Was, well, that's the thing. the The response was trying to get away from the racist stuff and just focus on the the criticism. Mm. So his response was trying to save Richie's backside. He didn't need to do that. He should have just yeah. let that prick out there to bloody to suffer in that. But that's one of the worst. Um, you know, not reading the room, no idea, clueless type of comments. I can't believe commentators in this day and age are, are still saying shit like that. But well, the thing is, though, Andrew, the, and we've seen it, and it's been very plain for everyone. They're vultures, and they will uh, like, like they care nothing for the game. They care nothing for the players. They don't care about the clubs, the fans, nothing at all. They just smell the blood in the water and they will tear everything apart if they think they can get some content out of it. And if there's nothing there that they've got to write about, they'll just make some shit up or they'll say some shit or they'll argue with each other and then they'll write about what they've said. Uh, I find it disgusting. And I think we're, I mean, rugby league journalism, is at its lowest point in the whole history of the game. Um, at this point, I don't understand why any player would talk to a journalist. 
I don't think that they get anything out of talking to a journalist. I don't think the game gets anything out of journalists at all. Um, you know, I, I, I just find it all very, very disgusting. And I just hope that Latrell Mitchell has a good support system around him. I, and I, I think I said this to you last night. I hope Latrell Mitchell has no idea any of this is going on. I hope he's at home. He's not looking at any social media. He's not reading any of the news. I hope he's completely oblivious to this and he's happy and he's looking forward to signing a big contract wherever he's going to sign it um, in between getting in his brand new Mercedes, you know, because it, this uh, I hope he buys a Ferrari, horrible. to be honest. Yeah. Look, he, he'll be able to afford one. He'll be able to afford one. But the, it would, must be very, very horrible to... Like, it's the off-season for Latrell, and he doesn't get a big off-season because he was playing for Australia last weekend. Most clubs start training this weekend. Test plays and stuff, I think, are allowed to come back uh, after Christmas from memory. Um, but, yeah, he, so his off season's not going to be very long. And I just hope that it's not getting to him. The one thing I will say um, about the journalist that you mentioned there, Mm. is that the only thing they tend to be careful about is not putting the target on themselves. Oh, and 100%. Dean, Dean Ritchie's gone and put a target on himself. And so, remember a few episodes back, I talked about the um, the idiocy scale. And yeah. I, think I, had, I think I had Paul Crawley as the sign of the biggest idiot. Yeah. 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 Dean Ritchie's now gone past that. Yeah. I now I now rate Paul Crawley above Dean Ritchie. Yeah, I I would agree with that. Look, I, I've said for a long time. I think that when it comes to a rugby league journalists, just on in terms of getting things right, I think Dean Ritchie's the worst, and and it's by quite a margin. Well, he's definitely proved that today. Mm. Um, so yeah, look, I'm with you. I I hope. I hope Latrell's in a good spot somewhere. I hope he's uh, ignoring all of this bullshit. Um, mm. And like Anthony Mundine, I hope you go out and you get the biggest bloody view you can. You look after your kids, you look after your partner, you look after your life and your future. You do all that shit because just like every other footballer out there, you're not going to get the chance to do the freaky stuff like Paul Gallen and, and Cameron Smith and play to your 38 or whatever. Most of you are going to retire by 34 or 35. You've still got 30 years of your working life left beyond you after then. Get yourself set up when you're young. You have to. Yep, 100%. And look, I, as people know, I've joined LinkedIn lately, and it's interesting because there are a lot of former players on there, and they've got their, when you go through and you're looking at your connections, you can see what former players are doing, and it's interesting. And there's a lot of former players that are just doing what you would call blue-collar jobs. Um, I would hope that a young player like Latrell Mitchell, who can be hopefully earning a million bucks a year until he's in his early 30s, I hope he sets himself up for life. And, you know, especially for a player, I mean, I love watching him play. He's one of the few reasons I watch a Roosters game. Because on his day, he can win a game single-handedly. Like on his day, no one can stop him. He's just going to win the game. And that's something very few players ever have been able to do. Um, and, yeah, it's yeah, – look at his I – mean, and you or me have talked about this. His try-scoring record is on track to be one of the best ever. Point-scoring-wise, by the time he's 30, he's probably going to be quite easily in the top five and pushing for one of the, the – maybe the top point scorer in the history of the game. Um. Well, at the you moment, know, he's, he's probably about a th- less than a season and a half away from reaching 1,000 career points in the NRL. Which is insane. Yeah. That puts him at 24 when he gets to 1,000 points. Didn't, um, and I'm pretty sure you looked this up, it was a couple of months ago, and you were looking up points per game for players all time, and he was like right up there already. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's very high up on the list. Um, you know, he's got 679 points in 96 games so far, and 
521 of those have been in his last 49 games. So at the moment, as the primary goal kicker, he's averaging over 10 points a game. Which is absolutely insane. So yeah, who wouldn't pay 800 grand to a million dollars if you're going to get a guaranteed 10 points per game on average out of him? And and one thing we were talking about the other night, if he was an if he was just a solid center, but he brought that goal kicking, he's going to be worth a whack anyway, just because of how many points he scores. But on top of that, he can also win a game single handedly, and yeah. he's twenty two years old, and he's a giant. Like he's as tall as it's kind of like Greg Inglis. He isn't as filled out and as it hasn't got the mass that Greg Inglis has. But he's as tall as the vast majority of forwards. Yeah, no, he's he's definitely got the body for it. There's no doubt about it. Mm. Um, see, I think he's just over six foot tall. He's just a solid. He's very strong. I tell you what, if I would bet, I would bet that he's probably six foot three. Like it, it like. I would like to see him measured now because when you watched him in the test matches, man, because you got to remember, I'm down at the test match against New Zealand in Wollongong. I'm closer down to the sideline. So I was able to, it was weird. I was able to take in the height of the different players. That's why when I saw Payne Haas on the field, I was like, geez, this is crazy. Um, Latrell Mitchell, massive, really, really big dude. So you tell me he's about the same height as you. Yeah, yeah, six foot three. Yeah, it's probably not as filled out and as like obviously not as ripped as I am. But you know, we can't all be. Can't all be. No, that's right. Yeah, you know what I mean. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. No, because I'm not. (laughs) Not even close. Um, Yeah, it's been a been a big week for the media. Attacking their new little target, they they do get on little runs like this where they just target a few people. Um, mm. It's sick, and it comes. It always brings up a, a a funny thing for me, and that is the media who every year they'll come up with this whinge about how players and clubs and officials won't talk to the media. And you see shit like this over the last few days, and go, hmm, I wonder why that is. Exactly. Like there is no news in this. All the stuff we read out today was no news in that. It's just all rumour speculation, innuendo, and then just suck it up, mate. It's only racism, you know. Yeah, it's just a bit of racism. you just got to put up with it. Like, what the fuck was that? From the white man. Yeah. Ah, it's so great. They haven't found the bottom yet, and it makes me wonder what the bottom is going to be for rugby league journalism and journalism in general in Australia because, man, they're disgusting. Yeah, it's been it's been an absolute car crash this week. Yep. So, I mean, you have to look at some of the stuff they were saying about Sam Burgess and the way that they've pried into his private life. Yeah, I mean, they're still going on about that and the AVR and stuff like that. I mean... You know, if you have to do it because he's a threat to society, fair enough. You've got to report that shit. But mm. even he's denied that he did anything wrong. It mm. looks like it's more of a family squabble. I, I just don't care. Yeah, neither do I. I, I literally don't care. Um, I can't believe the obsession they've got over a few players and things like that. It's it's sick. It really is. I, I just hope... Man, I hope Latron Mitchell's been looked after. I, I really do. And I don't know what you would do. I mean, if it was, say it was your son and he was going through this, I feel like what you'd have to do is is say, we're just going to cut everything off and because all of it is bullshit, all of it's fantasy. Like this stuff that the media comes up with, it's it's not real. And if... You know, he's not looking at his phone and all that sort of stuff. Tell him to, you know, tell his manager where he wants to play and they'll sort out his contract. Yeah. And it should be, and hopefully he's on holiday somewhere. I hope he's not even in Australia because he just needs to be away from all this because because this would hurt, I think, anybody waking up to this crap. And especially the, 
the reaction that this sort of crap brings. And for look, I don't know what it's like on the rest of Twitter. I find that my Twitter feed is a little bit different in that I've, I feel as though I follow a lot of pretty good people and pretty level-headed people who don't like to see this shit. But there are still people out there that I have seen their tweets where they're like, oh, he's selfish and he's this and he's that. And they don't know any better because they're not hearing anything else other than what the media tells them. And so Latrell's not just dealing with the media on this one. He's dealing with the reaction of people that all they hear is the media side in this. And it's just, it's rotten. I hate it. And the worst worst thing about it is there's very little the player can do to, to rectify that image destruction that's happened to them. Mm. You know, all the character assassination that goes on. There's mm-hmm. very little they can do about it. It doesn't matter how many charity things they do and all sort of stuff. That image will always just stay there because of what the media's done to them. And that's the thing that's horrible. I mean, as I said, I'll, I'll say it every time. You'll you have a look at a lot of people have got a negative attitude towards Robbie Farah. They've got a negative one towards Brett Stewart. Mm-hmm. What did they ever do wrong? Yeah. And this well, is the thing, well, they just that... get a set on a few players and they hammer them because they don't get those sort of clickbaity responses they want from them. They won't get the interviews out of them or they jump the fucking gun too quickly and, and pretty much determined that they were guilty already and then found out later, oh, actually, he wasn't. There's the, he, the apology never, ever stacks up and counters no. the amount of derision and hatred that they've put on those players and what they've done to their integrity. And Like, I also look at someone like a Darius Boyd who chose not to talk to the media mm. and look the way they ripped into him nonstop for years and years and years and years and years. I find them gross. I would love to see the Rugby League Players Association uh, push to ban certain journalists from uh, having media accreditation. I think that would be a good start. Um, I don't think that players should be forced to talk to journalists if they don't want to. Um, you know, we we don't need them anymore. No, they they should be able to. You know, if we're going to keep them, if they want to have any relevance whatsoever, then they need to do their job properly. Yeah, then you can stay in there. Simple as that. Do your job. You keep your job. Um, one other thing I wanted to touch on, which hasn't really been mentioned before, is I've noticed this year the content on the NRL website is getting more and more um, news-limited type. And, you know, they'll sort of sit there and they'll they, they'll have a few comments in there which will mean, you know, they'll have a bit of a dig at the referees or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, but if I'm going to the NRL website for content, I want that to be like propaganda. I want that to be all positive. This is how great the game is. I don't want to see that negative bullshit in there, attacking refs and, and crap like that. I think that's wrong that what goes on there. If you want to write that shit sort of like that, go into the mainstream media and go get the gigs over there. Don't do that on the NRL platform. That just makes the NRL look stupid and it makes them look um, like they're happy to have people shitting on their own game from from inside. And I think that's a bad image to, to put out there. I agree. And if they want to, you know, employ these former journalists as communications uh, staff, putting out comms releases, that's fine, right? I've got no problems with that. But they need to do the job that they were hired to do, and that's to promote rugby league. And I've got no problems with there being stories. Um, But there is a tone when a line is crossed where it's like, I mean, I've seen a couple of articles this year, and I can't remember the players that they were targeted at, but where they've kind of, um, you know what, I think one was Cameron Munster. They had a go at him on the NRL website, and it was it was like, why is that coming out of the NRL? Mm. It, it, you know, it shouldn't be. None of these players that are in the NRL should be having to worry about what is written by the NRL's comm staff. Exactly, and if the NRL wants their website to be, you know, the central hub for all news and all media about the game, then that shit needs to get sorted out real fast. It needs to be a positive experience on there, not a negative one. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, that wraps up a uh, a good session. 
what have we been up to in the last few days? I know you've been working on a uh, on a certain website. Yeah, FergoandTheFreak.com. It is probably, uh, it's. I would say it's at about the same level as Rugby League Project is in terms of being finished. So we're at the 95, not to 99 <laughs> cent finish mark. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Just saying, uh, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> I'll make no. you. I'll make you a bet, right? We'll, we'll see who finishes their website quicker, R- you, like FergoandTheFreak dot com or Rugby League Project. You will, <laughs> if, even if you spend the next twenty five years having a sleep, <laughs> you will still win. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Anyway, it's gonna it's, me, it's gonna take me two years just to go through the comments section <laughs> that we've got on Rugby League Project, and then we've got a, another section full of data in the back end from that people have submitted. That'll take probably another four years to get through. Yeah, well, doing, like you search. That's a, yeah, but I've had to add some links and stuff, man. I mean, you got to look at it from my point of view. Um, but yeah, the website's coming along really well. The only section I need to really finish up is the guests we've had, and we'll be adding uh, every interview we've had with the guest and their social media links alongside that. But the, all of the history episodes are up on there now. Um, you can look at uh, the prices for advertising on the podcast and what you get out of it. Three um, very good packages on there. Yeah, yeah. Two, so two, and Two episodes a week, it's bloody good value for money. It really is. And the other thing is that if you leave a nice comment for us on Apple Podcasts, What I'm doing is down towards the bottom of each page, I will be adding every single Apple podcast comment that's a nice one onto the bottom of the website with your username that you used during it. So you you lot support us and we love to to basically, you know, get you involved in the podcast and everything. And it's just another little way that you can, you know, see your name up somewhere. So yeah, we've uh, we've we've done that as well. So it's almost finished. There's not much left to do on that. But yeah, if you want to check it out, unfinished, go to fergoandthefreak dot com, and uh, yeah, give us some feedback if you want to as well. Sounds good. Um, you can follow Fergo on the Freak everywhere. We're on Twitter, Fergo Freak Pod. We're on LinkedIn now. Yeah, look it yeah. up. Oh, hang on. Did you do the LinkedIn page? Uh, yeah, we did the LinkedIn page. Remember? You, that's you right, used... you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, League Freak also has a a LinkedIn page. So if you've ever done any writing for League Freak, you can now add yeah. it to your LinkedIn profile. And yeah. what will you give them? I'll give them a, an outstanding reference in return. Um, <laughs> I've, I think I've done three of them so far. So have I done three of them? I might have done four of them. Um, but yeah, if you what you do is you basically put leaguefreak.com as a former place of empo- employment. Um, you tag that in and yeah, I, I leave you a really a good reference because anybody that's written for my side has been fantastic. I've loved the support that I've been given and it's finally a chance to maybe give something back a little bit. Um, so yeah. And pretty much every writer you've had has been absolute legends. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it was really cool to be able to post to as many of them as I could find on social media. There was some that I didn't get to find on social media, so don't think that I've forgotten everyone because I went through everyone's usernames and stuff that have posted on the site. Um, but yeah, if you're on LinkedIn, just get in touch and and put leaguefreak.com as your former place of employment, and yeah, I'll give you a nice reference. There you go, people. Get in on that. Um, can't remember if there's anything else. Is that pretty much it, you reckon? I think that's pretty much it. Alrighty then. On that note, we'll wrap this one up and we'll catch you in the next episode in about 15 minutes. <laughs>